For decades, a mystery in the skies has captivated and deeply concerned people across the world. Chemtrails, the long white streaks left behind by high-flying airplanes, have sparked fierce debates among scientists, researchers, and skeptics alike. To some, these trails are thought of as harmless condensation trails, contrails, formed when water vapor in jet exhaust freezes at high altitudes. But this simply cannot be true because contrails dissipate very quickly, while chemtrails linger for hours and hours, indicating that there's something else being dispersed. Thus, many have come to see them as something far more calculated and sinister, deliberate chemical dispersals aimed at achieving specific hidden agendas. The modern chemtrail theory began to take shape in the late 1990s and early 2000s when observers noticed the unusual persistence in these trails, forming hazy patterns, sometimes seeming like a deliberate crisscross in the sky. Many began to question whether something unusual was occurring in the upper atmosphere. The release of a 1996 US Air Force report titled, Weather as a Force Multiplier, Owning the Weather in 2025, added fuel to the fire the document speculated on future military uses of weather modification technology, including its potential to enhance or disrupt military operations. Around the same time, growing attention was being paid to the HARP Research Facility in Alaska, a high-frequency ionosphere research program suspected by some to be part of secret experiments involving weather control, electromagnetic manipulation, and even mind control. By 1999, the late-night radio host Art Bell began discussing chemtrail theories on his widely popular show, introducing the concept to an even larger audience. That same year, Clifford Carnicom, a scientist and one of the earliest investigators, conducted a series of atmospheric tests. Carnicom's experiments revealed high levels of unusual particles in the air, including metallic particles, strange fibers, and crystalline substances. His findings suggested that something unnatural was being introduced into the atmosphere. These discoveries became the foundation of the chemtrail theory, and the term chemtrails was born. Carnicom's subsequent documentary, Aerosol Crimes, released in 2005, presented evidence of atmospheric manipulation and inspired a new wave of researchers to join the investigation. Over the years, chemtrail researchers have identified a wide range of suspected motives for these operations, each more unsettling than the last. One of the most commonly proposed explanations is weather modification. Geoengineering techniques such as cloud seeding, which involves spraying silver iodide to induce rainfall, are well documented and widely used. Chemtrail theorists suggest these techniques may have been taken to extreme levels, with the military or private organizations attempting to manipulate global weather patterns. This could include attempts to reduce the effects of climate change, creating artificial droughts or storms, or using the weather as a weapon in covert warfare. The role of HARP is often tied to these theories, with some claiming it enhances the atmospheric effects of chemtrails, allowing precise control over weather systems or disrupting enemy nations' agriculture and infrastructure. Other theories propose that chemtrails are being used for psychological or biological manipulation. Some believe that chemicals dispersed through chemtrails suppress human consciousness, keeping people docile, compliant, and disconnected from their spiritual potential. Others suggest that these chemicals are linked to health issues, such as respiratory illnesses, autoimmune diseases, and even conditions like Morgellons syndrome, a rare and controversial skin disorder. While mainstream science has not verified these claims, the persistence of these theories raise questions about the long-term effects of airborne particulates on human health. 
Further, the presence of metallic particles, such as aluminum and barium in the atmosphere, as suggested by independent studies, has led some to speculate that these chemicals could interact with electromagnetic fields to alter human behavior or even target specific populations. Theorists claim that these particles are deliberately introduced to conduct experiments on mass populations without their consent. The more elaborate theories argue that chemtrails are designed to fulfill multiple agendas simultaneously. These include controlling food populations by altering soil chemistry to favor genetically modified crops, manipulating global populations by reducing fertility rates, and even preparing the atmosphere for advanced holographic or electromagnetic technologies. Photographs of unmarked military jets leaving these trails have further fueled suspicions, with many asking why the chemicals being released cannot be analyzed more widely. Despite widespread discussion, mainstream scientific and governmental organizations have consistently denied the existence of chemtrails. In response to the public growing concern, the Environmental Protection Agency, the NSA, the Federal Aviation Administration, and the NOAA issued a joint fact sheet explaining contrails as a natural byproduct of jet engine exhaust in cold, humid air. It seemed to most paying attention, however, that the swift and coordinated denial was seen not as clarification, but as evidence of a cover-up. This tension has only deepened in the internet age, where searches for chemtrails yield millions of results, the majority of which are articles attempting to debunk the theory. Critics argue that this is evidence of collusion between tech companies and governments to suppress the truth, though tech companies claim they are simply combating misinformation. But the story doesn't end here. In fact, it seems to connect to an even larger and more ominous theory, Project Bluebeam. First proposed by Canadian journalist Sergei Monast in the 1990s, Project Bluebeam describes a covert plan to use advanced technologies to stage a global crisis, one designed to bring about a new world order. According to Monast, the plan involves four stages, each more elaborate than the last. The first stage involves undermining existing religious beliefs by fabricating archaeological discoveries that challenge traditional doctrines. Ancient artifacts or texts could be discovered and used to suggest that widely accepted religious histories are false, shaking faiths and preparing humanity for the next step, the introduction of a new universal religion. The second stage involves the use of holographic technology to project images of religious figures or deities into the skies over different regions of the world. These projections would communicate messages to their followers, appearing as the fulfillment of prophecies or divine interventions. Christians might see Jesus, Muslims might see Muhammad, and Hindus might see Krishna, but eventually, all these figures would converge into a single universal deity who claims to unify all faiths under one new religion. The third stage employs electromagnetic wave technology to simulate telepathic communication. Monast claimed that technologies capable of transmitting audio directly into people's minds, so-called voice-to-skull systems, would be used to implant thoughts and commands, creating the illusion of divine communication. The final stage is the most dramatic the staging of a massive global false flag event. This could take the form of an extraterrestrial invasion, a staged apocalypse, or a divine reckoning. The goal is to create fear and disorientation so intense that humanity willingly submits to a one-world government as the only solution to survival. Chemtrails, some theorists argue, play a critical role in this stage by preparing the atmosphere for large-scale holographic projections or dispersing chemicals that alter human perception, making the illusion more convincing. Und habt ihr nach einem passenden Broker gesucht? Wie sieht's denn bei dir aus, Christoph? Ich habe einen neuen Broker und da kann ich den DAX mit zwei. The whole theory is corroborated by Werner von Braun, a pivotal figure in rocket technology. so-called voice-to-skull systems, would be used to implant thoughts and commands, creating the illusion of divine communication. 
The final stage is the most dramatic, the staging of a massive global false flag event. This could take the form of an extraterrestrial invasion, a staged apocalypse, or a divine reckoning. The goal is to create fear and disorientation so intense that humanity willingly submits to a one-world government as the only solution to survival. Chemtrails, some theorists argue, play a critical role in this stage by preparing the atmosphere for large-scale holographic projections or dispersing chemicals that alter human perception, making the illusion more convincing. The whole theory is corroborated by Werner von Braun, a pivotal figure in rocket technology and space exploration and is often associated with a narrative involving a staged alien invasion. This connection primarily stems from accounts by Dr. Carol Rosen, who worked with Von Braun in the 1970s. Rosen recounted that Von Braun warned of a sequence of fabricated threats, ranging from rogue nations to asteroids, culminating in a hoaxed extraterrestrial invasion intended to justify the expansion of military capabilities into space. While Von Braun's warnings, as conveyed by Rosen, and the tenets of Project Bluebeam share thematic similarities, particularly the idea of a fabricated alien threat to achieve global control, it's important to note that Von Braun himself did not publicly document or endorse the specifics of Project Bluebeam. The connections between his alleged warnings and Monast's theory are primarily drawn from interpretations and extrapolations within conspiracy theory circles. But still, the narrative of a hoaxed alien invasion as a means to consolidate power is a recurring theme. The ultimate goal, though, of Project Bluebeam is to consolidate power under a single centralized authority. National borders would dissolve, and religious and cultural distinctions would be erased. Humanity would be unified under a single digital currency, a universal faith, and constant surveillance by advanced technologies. Fear and manipulation would ensure compliance as fabricated crises provide justification for authoritarian control. Now some might consider, besides the darker aspects of this agenda, that this plan would have many benefits. Imagine being able to travel anywhere in the world without need of a passport, to have the whole world working with unified systems, no more war between nations, and never needing to convert money to different currencies. But if all of this was done by a nefarious secret government, then could it really be a good thing? Critics of Project Bluebeam and chemtrail theories argue that they lack evidence and rely on speculation and paranoia. However, for those who believe, these theories represent a warning about the dangers of unchecked technological power and the erosion of personal freedoms. They raise questions about what might be hidden in plain sight and challenge us to stay vigilant in a world where truth is increasingly difficult to discern. Ultimately, it's up to each of us to be strong within our hearts and stand true to the truth no matter what befalls our species in the future. As always, time will tell. The skies above may hold secrets we are only beginning to uncover. Whether or not these theories are true, they force us to confront the complexities of technology, governance, and the future of human freedom. Step into a world where the mysteries of existence, the soul, and the cosmos are laid bare. The Hermetica Rebirth of Wisdom is a revolutionary retelling of one of history's most profound philosophical and spiritual works. These writings attributed to Hermes Trismegistus the mythical sage and embodiment of divine wisdom, have shaped human thought for centuries. Their rediscovery during the Renaissance sparked an intellectual and spiritual awakening, inspiring some of history's greatest minds to explore the mysteries of science, art, and spirituality. The original texts, while profound in their wisdom, are often cloaked in archaic language and dense translations, making them challenging for modern readers to engage with. This new retelling of the Hermetica bridges the gap between the ancient and the contemporary. It is a direct translation of the original Hermetic writings, keeping the meanings fundamentally intact. Rebirth of Wisdom retains the profound depth of the original while making its teachings understandable and applicable for today's seekers. 
No longer will language barriers obscure the brilliance of Hermes' insights. To share an example with you, consider this translation. Asclepius, thy argument, Logos, thrice greatest one, is not to be gainsaid. Air is a body. Further, it is this body which doth pervade all things, and so, pervading, fill them. What are we, then, to call that space in which the all doth move? Hermes, the bodiless Asclepius. What, then, is bodiless? Tis mind and reason, Logos, whole out of whole, all self-embracing, free from all body, from all error free, unsensible to body and untouchable, self-stayed in self, containing all, preserving those that are, whose rays, to use a likeness, are good, truth, light beyond light, the archetype of soul.